Hi, I'm David Snowpeck. I am a freelance game developer and web developer. Both of those things are pertinent to this conversation. Uh, and I've been involved in open source since the late 90s. Uh, you can find me at snowpeckgames.com, at snowpeckgames on Twitter, youtube.com slash snowpeckgames, and I'm dsnowpeck on GitHub, GitLab, Discord, and IRC. So today we're going to be talking about WebXR. What is WebXR? Well, it's an open standard for allowing web applications to work with virtual reality or augmented reality hardware. What does this actually look like in practice? Well, you'd visit a web page, click some Enter VR or Enter AR button, and then enter an immersive VR or AR experience on your headset or phone or futuristic AR glasses, whatever you may have where the application is actually running in the web page, similar to how the HTML5 export of a Godot game is running in the web page on the web browser. In fact, let me show you. This is my home environment in my Oculus Quest 1. And this is the Oculus browser which is just a normal web browser that floats here uh, on a 2D panel uh, and lets you interact with flat web pages. But if you navigate to a WebXR experience, this is a collection of WebXR samples from the immersive web group, and then hit the Enter VR button, it takes you into this immersive VR world where I'm now surrounded by planets and the sun and this is all provided by the web page itself running in the web browser so that's cool a vr app running from a web page but why would you even want to do that like that's a pretty weird thing to do running a vr app from a web page um why not just run it natively well uh there are several pretty compelling use cases for example, getting your app or experience into walled gardens. Uh, a number of the platforms, uh, AR and VR platforms, have pretty restrictive uh, app stores. And getting your app into it can be pretty difficult. Uh, the Oculus Quest store is particularly notorious. Uh, Facebook actually recommends that you submit a proposal to them before you even start working on your game so that they can reject you right away <laughs> rather than having you go through all of the trouble of creating your game to only get rejected at the end. Um, so WebXR can be an alternate way to distribute your app to, for example, Oculus Quest users, uh, bypassing the store entirely. It's easier to share games and experiences when the user doesn't have to download or install anything. Um, I know from doing tons of game jams that if your game jam game has an HTML5 export, that way more people are going to try it and rate it than if they had to download it. So the same applies here. Um, it can be easier to get people to try your little hobbyist experimental uh, WebXR experience than getting someone to download and install a new app. WebXR supports a wide range of VR and AR devices. Unfortunately, right now, um, generally to support the different VR devices, you have to use a different like SDK with a different API for each one of them. Um, and sometimes even different builds, right? So like to build your app for uh, Steam, you're going to make a desktop build like normal Windows, Linux, Mac OS builds. To do the Oculus Quest, you have to make an Android build. Uh, whereas with WebXR, you can support just a, a ton of different devices with a single API with a single build, um, including super low end devices, you know, like Google Cardboard, and then all the way up to more high end devices like the Valve Index. It also allows you to smoothly transition from the web to an immersive experience. And this applies more to AR than VR, but imagine you're browsing a furniture store website on your smartphone, and you see a piece of furniture you would like, you can hit some kind of view in my room button, which would start an immersive AR experience that would allow you to place that piece of furniture somewhere in your house and see what it would look like on your smartphone. So, Godot can do AR and VR, right? In fact, Godot supports a whole bunch of different platforms at different levels of completeness. Some of them are more alpha or beta quality, but uh, it supports 
Open VR, which is Steam VR, both the Oculus Rift and Oculus Quest APIs, AR Kit and AR Core, uh, Open XR, which will hopefully be the future to unify a whole bunch of these APIs so we don't have to deal with so many of them, and a bunch more. But does it support WebXR? Well, <laughs> let me tell you uh, the story of how WebXR support got added to Godot. Uh, it all started on September 17th after Facebook Connect 7 when the Oculus Quest 2 was announced. Um, so I read a lot of VR news sites and listen to VR podcasts, and the general consensus was that the Oculus Quest 2 was going to be a huge success. It's a super compelling device at a pretty reasonable price, and lots of people were going to buy it, and this was going to expand the VR market considerably, which is a great thing, right? But there was also some worry that this was going to concentrate even more power in a single platform's App Store in a single walled garden, allowing a single company to decide, uh, you know, which uh, VR apps and experiences will be able to access this new, broader uh, VR audience. Now, I don't personally have any problem with Facebook. Uh, I know that some people do for totally legitimate, reasonable reasons, and I would never fault anyone for having. Facebook skepticism, but I'm just not one of those people. Uh, I have an Oculus Quest 1, which I love. My Oculus Quest 2 is coming in the mail in like five days, and I'm so excited. Um, but I do believe that it is important to have an easily accessible channel to share hobbyist games and experimental experiences and game jam games with a wide audience. Um, sideloading is a thing. Like on the Oculus Quest, you can sideload apps onto your device, completely bypassing the store. But this is a pretty technical thing to do. And you have to create a developer account with Facebook. Like normal people, normal non technical people just aren't going to do this. Uh, but they will go visit a web page. So maybe. WebXR could be that easily accessible channel to share these little experiences with a wide audience who maybe can't sideload, but is willing to go visit a URL. So, uh, I was thinking, how hard can it be to add WebXR support to Godot? Like, I'm a web developer. I know web stuff. Uh, I'm a game developer. I have a VR headset. How hard can it be? Uh, it turns out pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 10 times harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but don't worry, the story is a happy ending. Um, on September 28th, I created the first work in progress PR. Um, this initial version uh, would only work in the WebXR emulator. It wouldn't work on an actual device, but I wanted to get it out there uh, to share it with the community so that I could get some, some help, some review, and, and some uh, advice. Uh, while I was working on this over the next three months, uh, I made six progress report videos on YouTube. Uh, they are pretty technical, actually. Like I would talk about the thing that I'm stuck on and explicitly ask for help. And I got tons of help from the community, uh, particularly from Fales, the HTML5 uh, Godot core maintainer, and Bastiano Lee, the ARVR uh, maintainer for Godot core, as well as like a ton of other people from the uh, XR community in Godot. Uh, there were maybe a dozen people in the XR channel in the Godot Discord who uh, gave advice or tested out builds or found bugs. There's some really serious bugs found by uh, different people on Discord, as well as the WebXR Discord, too. Uh, there were people there giving advice and, and uh, helping me with things and testing out builds. So uh, even though I wrote most of the code that added the support, like I couldn't have done it without the help from the, the great Godot and WebXR communities. So finally, on January 4th, 2021, WebXR support was merged into Godot and first released with uh, Godot 3.2.4 Beta 5. And of course, it'll be in 3.2.4 stable when that eventually comes out. So uh, I would like to share with you a couple of WebXR apps created with Godot. The first one we're going to look at is this Toy Racer VR demo that I've been working on in order to test out uh, WebXR. Uh, and here are the links to the source code or to play it if you're interested. And I'm actually going to make these slides available somewhere. So all of the links in here uh, you should be able to get from the slides, which I hope will be linked from the uh, presentation somehow. So if we press this Enter VR button in the corner, we end up on the racetrack. Down here, we can see two race cars. Um, our hands are replaced by these kind of RC car-inspired controllers, where if I press the, the trigger on the right controller, 
we'll see the car on the right go forward. And if I press the trigger on the left controller, we'll see the uh, left car go forward. And if I use the thumbstick, I can actually drive the car around with a real vehicle physics using a vehicle body from uh, Godot. But if I don't use the thumbstick and just press the uh, trigger, the car will drive around the track on this predefined path. And the idea with that is I wanted to have a graceful fallback for less capable devices. So if you have a device that only has a single like primary action button, uh, that would register basically as the trigger on the left controller. And so you'd be able to press that one button and get something to happen to have the car drive around the track. But if you have a more capable device, like this is an Oculus Quest 1 with a thumbstick, I can use that to sort of free drive this car around. Next up is the Oculus Quest Toolkit by Neospark314. Uh, so if you haven't heard of it, the Oculus Quest Toolkit is really awesome. It's a toolkit of components for building common features of VR applications, including like 2D UI canvases. So you can put some uh, UI controls in your VR game, uh, both smooth and teleport locomotion, uh, grabbing and throwing rigid bodies, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. Um, despite the name, despite that it's called the Oculus Quest Toolkit, it's not just for Oculus Quest. It also supports the Oculus Rift API, OpenVR, which is SteamVR, and now WebXR. So if you build a app using the Oculus Quest Toolkit, you basically uh, get support for all of these different VR platforms out of the box. It's very cool. Um, if you want to find the code, uh, you can find it there. And also, Neospark314 has recently put uh, the demo for the toolkit up on itch.io as a web playable WebXR experience. This is the itch.io page for Neospark314's Godot Oculus Quest toolkit. It's just a normal itch.io page with the normal HTML5 uh, play frame up here. If I click Run Tool, and then press the Enter VR button. Ooh, I gotta allow it. I am taken into the Oculus Quest Toolkit demo in WebXR. And you've got these uh, floating panels with normal uh, Godot controls on them, uh, which being able to easily put controls on these panels is a feature of the uh, Oculus Quest Toolkit. The on-screen keyboard, so you can have a way for users to type some text in your app and a bunch of more specific demos. My favorite one is the uh, teleport demo. So you can use this uh, teleport component provided by the Oculus Quest Toolkit. And this is my favorite just because I like being in this environment. I mean, the textures are super low res, but just for some reason, like moving around in this space feels really good to me. And in this demo, uh, you can pick up objects and throw them around a little bit. Next is Pixel Arena by M Sub Two. It's a kind of wave combat game where you fight, you know, enemies coming at you with a sword or a crossbow. It's a game jam game that uh, M Sub Two made in Godot that he later adapted to WebXR in order to test out uh, Godot's WebXR support. Um, as far as I know, it is the first WebXR game made in Godot that was published to itch.io. So check it out. All right, Pixel Arena, grab the knife to start. Teleport over here. Let's grab this knife. Oh no. Where's that crossbow again? <laughs> I think it was over here somewhere? I'm not sure. Oh, here come the enemies. There's one over there. Any from over here? No, just, oh, here we got two. All right, they're coming. Hey. This one's flanking me? Oh, jeez. I'm moving. I'm moving. 
Next up, we have VR Workout, which is an open source VR fitness game uh, that aims to be a more intense workout experience than most VR fitness apps out there. Um, unlike the previous uh, games that we looked at, uh, which were mostly like demos and a game jam game, uh, this is a real app, a real um, uh you know, full experience uh, that's available for the Oculus Quest, uh, but also PC VR, I think Steam VR, um, which you can get from the website uh, linked here. And um, there is a WebXR version available. As far as I understand it, this isn't like a full, complete, uh, stable experience. Um, there's some issues with uh, the audio, because there's kind of an audio component to the workout um, that doesn't work quite as well when run in HTML5. Um, with WebXR, but um, you know this is one of the examples of uh, a community member who was testing out WebXR and you know is experimenting with porting it. I don't know if it will ever get stable enough on WebXR for this to be like an official version of the game. Uh, so if you want to try it, you're probably better off trying you know the Quest version or the uh, PC VR version. But if you're curious, you can also check out the WebXR version. All right, let's enter VR. Okay, disclaimer, use at your own risk. Nod five times to confirm you have read and agreed to disclaimer. All right, one, two, three, oh, three times. Okay, here's the menu. I'm not really sure I'm ready to work out. <laughs> Good. We can do uh, a couple of different workouts with some different songs. Uh, here, what is this? Select your workout or exercise. Select song to your right. Oh, okay. No, so these are the songs, and this is the workout routine with some crunches, some push-ups, some squats. Ooh, that's that's intense. All right. Double tap and exercise to see the introduction. Let's see. Hmm. Wonder if that's supposed to be a video. That's. Oh, hey, there we go. The video is loading. Wow. Okay. So that's uh, how to do a burpee, I guess. Okay, let's let's try a workout here. So we're gonna select something easy. What's easy? Jumping. There we go. Jumping and standing. I can jump. Let's select a song. Okay. Oh no! What's happening? Now. What? What? Okay, I'm jogging. I'm jogging. Am I supposed to duck? What am I doing? Ah! Squat. <laughs> squat. I can squat. Okay. Now. Am I supposed to punch these? <laughs> I should have read the instructions! So, after watching all of those cool WebXR demos, I'm sure the question you have in your mind is, how can I make my own WebXR app in Godot? Well, uh, using WebXR in Godot is about as easy as building a AR or VR app for any of the other platforms that Godot supports. Um, I have a 30-minute tutorial that is both in text and video format, which for real will take you about 30 minutes to follow. The video version is actually only 22 minutes long. Um, which has step-by-step -step instructions on how to go from a completely blank project to a WebXR app with head tracking, some cubes that follow your hands, and handling uh, the input on the controllers. So everything that you need to then go from that base to making your amazing, innovative WebXR experience. Um, it even includes some debugging tips, such as uh, where to get the WebXR emulator extension for Chrome or Firefox, uh, which allows you to do some limited testing of your WebXR experience in a desktop web browser, which saves you from having to you know, put on the headset uh, to do any kind of testing, really saves you a lot of time as well as how to do remote debugging if you're running your app on the Quest. So if you put on your Oculus Quest, open up the Oculus browser, go to your WebXR app, there is no way within the headset to see any error messages or get any like debug output if you're putting like print statements in your uh, in your code. But there is a way to connect the Quest to your desktop computer with a USB cable and then get all of that output on your desktop. So it includes information on how to do that 
So if you're interested in making a WebXR experience, go check it out. It's really pretty easy. And definitely uh, contact me and let me know what you made. I'm super excited to see uh, what everyone comes up with. So the future of WebXR in Godot. Uh, the first thing that I'd like to focus on is uh, testing with more devices. So while WebXR supports this wide range of devices, uh, myself and the XR community has really only tested WebXR and Godot on like a handful of devices. Um, and I'm sure once we start testing it out on a bunch of other devices, we'll find things that need to be fixed. Um, I'm particularly interested in trying it on some of the more low-end devices. All of the high-end devices are kind of the same, like a headset with controllers that are all relatively similar, whether it's a Oculus Rift or Oculus Quest or uh, uh, you know Vive or... Uh, uh, Valve Index or whatever. So I'll be doing a lot more testing on a, on a wider range of devices, and I invite you know anyone in the community who has uh, some more interesting uh, VR devices to give it a try and let me know how it goes so we can uh, improve WebXR support and get it working with, with your device. Improved performance. So WebXR performance um, with Godot is pretty good, but uh, I think there's a lot of improvements that could be made. When you compare it to um, WebXR experiences created in game engines that are specifically designed for WebXR, um, I think Godot is is not quite as performant. Um, like uh, A-Frame, there's some A-Frame uh, games that I've played where I just couldn't believe that this wasn't a native game because the performance was so good. Um, and I think part of that is just the HTML5 performance of Godot. I think there's a lot of things that could be done to improve that in general, and that would also you know, help WebXR. Uh, but also in uh, the WebXR implementation in Godot, there's this unnecessary copy that I think is really hurting uh, our performance that uh, I would really like to remove. Not to get too technical, but basically what's going on is uh, WebXR uh, gives us this frame buffer that we need to render to, to render to each of the eyes. And uh, due to kind of the way that VR support is built into the Godot renderer, um, I, there, there, was, there isn't a way without changing the renderer to render directly to this frame buffer. And what we're doing is rendering to uh, a, a texture and then copying from that texture to the frame buffer. And uh, if we could eliminate that, I think that would really improve performance. And I think it's possible to do it. We just have to make these internal changes to the, the Godot 3.2 renderer, um, which I plan to work on that uh, you know, in the coming weeks and months. But that said, like the performance of uh, WebXR with Godot is totally serviceable, especially if you're designing your game specifically for WebXR, because then you can kind of you know watch how the different things that you're doing are affecting performance and keep it within a range that's that's acceptable. And it's only going to get better. <laughs> the performance of WebXR and Godot right now is the worst it will ever be, and as time goes on, we're we're going to improve it more and more. Uh, bug fixes. There's a number of bugs uh, that we know about already in the WebXR support for Godot uh, that were already there before the PR got merged, but we kind of deemed them to be lower priority. Um, you know, they're not critical bugs. Uh, so the idea was let's get this big chunk of code into Godot uh, that enables WebXR, and then we'll come back later with smaller PRs to fix up these little bugs as time allows. Um, and I'm sure now that it's out there, now that it's part of a beta, with more people trying it, we'll find even more bugs and and uh, start working on getting those fixed as well. Godot 4.0, the big one. Um, so uh, as you probably know, uh, the biggest change in Godot 4 is that the renderer was rewritten to use Vulkan rather than OpenGL. And WebXR uh, depends on WebGL, which depends on OpenGL. So uh, as of right now, like the WebGL support uh, has been completely removed from Godot 4.0, with the idea that once the renderer is stable, uh, it's going to be added back as like an alternate renderer. So you could have the the sort of main Vulkan renderer or this alternate OpenGL renderer, um, and work. To do that is ongoing. A contributor named Lawn Jelly uh, has been working on that, and uh, Fales, uh, the HTML5 um, maintainer for Godot, has taken Lawn Jelly support and used it to get WebGL working. He posted a, an image on, on Twitter. So I think that that is going to be coming together relatively soon. And once uh, WebGL is back in Godot 4, that will enable uh, us to get WebXR working. And to be clear, like the code for WebXR is already merged into 
uh, the Godot master branch, which is the branch where Godot 4 is going to come off of. And it compiles, but it just doesn't work, right? <laughs> because there's no uh, uh, OpenGL support uh, for it to use. And also, like um, the AR VR support uh, also isn't working in Godot 4. Um, but that also should be improving soon. Um, Bastiano Lee, the ARVR maintainer of Godot, was recently hired on to work on the project full time, and he's going to be starting in February. So I'm sure his first order of business is going to be getting ARVR support back into Godot 4. And once those two things are in, uh, that will allow me to go back and uh, get the WebXR support working in Godot 4.0. So hopefully, in a couple of months, uh, that will be working as well. And augmented reality. I'm sure that you noticed all of the demos we were showing earlier were VR demos and not AR demos. And that's because there is no uh, AR support currently uh, in the WebXR implementation in Godot. Um, and since all the stuff for VR is there, it shouldn't be that hard to then come back in and implement um, the bits required to do AR. Um, but speaking for myself, uh, I have very little experience with AR. Uh, I have barely used any AR apps, and I've never created an AR app. Um, so I need to do some AR learning. I need to immerse myself in AR, uh, try out some more apps. Um, I'm planning to try implementing uh, my own AR app, not with Godot, but directly on top of I always get the two confused between AR Core and AR Kit, but the Android one, so that I can get some experience with how that is supposed to work, and then kind of come back and say, okay, now how can I take that knowledge and and use it to to set up um, AR support in WebXR? So that's another thing that's that's coming. All of these things uh, are going to be the things that I'm going to be working on over the next uh, several months. So look forward to that. Uh, all right. Uh, that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, I believe there's going to be a Q&A time uh, as part of GodotCon. But if you're watching this you know, way after the fact, um, or just think of something later, feel free to contact me with any questions or comments that you have. You can find me in all of these places. Thank you.